Hey guys, welcome back to Simplicity Electricity. So in today's video, we're going to be going over the Belkin N1 wireless router. Now, for those of you who are familiar, this is an upgrade from the older style Belkin N wireless router. And you're going to notice a couple cosmetic differences. Um, the functionality is pretty much the same. This one is just an upgrade. But um, the differences are mostly cosmetic. But let's focus on this router today. So uh, it's a very, very good router for your home or place of business. Uh, I personally think that the N style of routers uh, that support wireless N, G, and B are some of the best routers out there right now and some of the most common. So uh, let's go over a couple features that this device has. First of all, on the front you're going to notice this little instrument panel which basically indicates a couple of things that are going on with the router. Uh, the security button basically indicates if the device has a active password on it. The wireless button basically indicates that the device has wireless capabilities and it could also mean that a device is connected to it. Uh, wired is of course for any ethernet ports that are um, connected to a computer or other device. The router functionality basically indicates that it is currently putting out a wireless signal that you could connect to. The modem indicates that it is connected to a modem or a source from an ethernet cable that is giving it internet connection and of course the internet button means that it is connected to the internet all right so a couple of things to note is in case you didn't notice this actually has an extra antenna in the middle and what this basically does is when you are putting this in your house or business you want to aim these antennas towards areas of well, high traffic, where a lot of people are going to be connected to this. So in a home, ideally you would want to put this where most of your internet devices are going to be, possibly in the center of the house or just in one particular room. And of course, as you move these antennas up, you know, you can adjust them, turn them wherever they would need to go. Let's say that the direction that needed the most Wi-Fi connectivity was facing this way, you would face them all that way to catch the most signal. But anyway, enough about that. Let's have a quick look at the back. So, this device, uh, pretty simple on the back. It has a WPS push button. Uh, this basically helps you connect to devices pretty easily and bypass putting in the password. And it just pretty much helps you save time for the most part. Uh, it has four Ethernet ports, each of these to connect to wired connections, possibly a gaming system, computer, smart TV, whatever. And it has another Ethernet jack. This what you would connect to your modem or possibly a switch or another router. It has the reset button, which you would push down to reset this device if you wanted to do it the old-fashioned way. And it is powered by 12 volts, 1 amp DC power. And here is a quick look on the bottom if you wanted to see the version or if any of you are curious about any of that. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty simple device. Um, should work straight out of the box. But unfortunately, this is a used one as most of my devices are. So I'm going to show you guys how to connect this to your computer and reset it. Okay guys, so once I have my router connected to my desktop via Ethernet cable, I can log into the web page that the router has its settings on. Now, uh, of course you can always just do this with Wi-Fi, I just prefer Ethernet. Now, since I have unlocked this router before, um, it w automatically connected me to the router's Wi-Fi, but let's go ahead and log into it. Now, since this is a Belkin router, you can log in by typing in 192.168.2.1 and that'll bring you to the router's web page setup. Now of course you know you can do this in Internet Explorer or Google Chrome and it may be different if your Belkin router is a very peculiar kind of model but you can always look it up and figure out what you need to type in up here based on your model. So the first thing that I recommend doing if you haven't already reset this device, go ahead and click Restore Factory Defaults and press this button. I'm not going to do it now for the sake of the video, but you would always want to do this. Sometimes uh, it will prompt you to have a login thing up here, and it'll say uh, default password is by leaving the space blank. 
So sometimes people, if this was someone's personal router before, they may have put in a password. And if that is the case, go ahead and press the reset button that's actually on the router. Hold it down for 30 seconds and then just come back to this web page whenever it's finally reset itself and it shouldn't say that anymore. So a couple of things that you're going to want to work on on here. Let's start with the channel and SSID. So the wireless channel um, and the extension channel, things like that, I would personally just leave those um, automatically set to whatever they are. Like I said, the router already knows its factory defaults and personally I normally just leave them as is. Uh, but again, if you want to change them, you can. The SSID is what this router is going to be called. So uh, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to change it, but I named it Wi-Fi Box Belkin. But you can name it whatever you want to. For the wireless mode, you're going to see a bunch of jumbled up stuff right here. So let me explain each of those. So what these basically are are different variations of wireless types that have occurred over the years. N is the newest, G is a little bit older, and B is the oldest version. Um, personally, I would always leave this setting on this function right here because what that basically does is it allows you to connect almost any wireless device that's been made over the last decade to this device. If you were to set it just to N, for example, then some older things, such as maybe an old Xbox or PlayStation, may not work on it properly. But so, as I stated before, always leave it on as many options as it'll let you have. For bandwidth, I'd leave it as is. And for broadcasting SSID, I would always leave it checked. That way, that when you pull up your internet settings on your laptop or your phone, or if you're trying to connect to Wi Fi, it'll display it for you and you can see what it is. And then you would click Apply Changes. Uh, for protected mode, um, I'm going to leave it off for the sake of this video, but you can always click the more info pin here and learn more about that. Okay, for security, uh, security mode is currently disabled. That means that this device is open to threats and there's no password on it. So what you would want to do is enable it, and I always recommend WPA2 personal, which is going to be this right here, and it's going to have a 2 beside it and I would recommend adding your own personal password, setting it to WPA2 personal if this is for your house, and then applying the changes. Okay, going into the Wi-Fi protected setup, what this basically does is, I guess it has the same screen as this, but what WPS does is it kind of lets you connect two devices, uh, oh there it is, it lets you connect to devices uh, usually with the push of, push of a button and you can use it by having a specific pin number, all this and that, yada yada yada. I don't really use it, but that's just me. But um, I would recommend using this usually if you have a lot of guests over, if you're someone who's always getting new things to connect to the internet. Again, personal preference. The option to use this as an access point. So uh, you can read up here and what this basically does is it allows you to connect uh, to your home network and I'm pretty sure with this specific model it just lets you clone the name of your home network so instead of having your Wi-Fi from your modem and your Wi-Fi from this device they can both become essentially the same network and um, I would always recommend trying to play around with that if you're in a very large home and you just don't want intertwining signals. If you lose access to the downstairs Wi-Fi and this Wi-Fi upstairs is completely different, why not just make them the same so you're always connected? Okay, for firewall, um, I personally don't see any reason you'd have to get on here unless this is for maybe a small business and you're using this router in a public place. Uh, down here under utilities, you have the option to restart your router if possibly you think that maybe something's wrong with it. Restarting it could help. Restoring it to factory default settings, as I explained before, it resets everything on the router. Uh, the save backup current settings option, what it basically does is it stores a file on your computer of all the settings. That way if you ever do reset your router, you can just apply the file going directly here and it does all of the uh, previous stuff you had set up, it automatically puts it in for you, and it's convenient. Uh, restore previous settings, again, pretty much the same thing. If you've had previous settings that you like and then you want to try something new, 
you can always save those if the new stuff doesn't work out. Firmware update, I always recommend updating the firmware on your router. The company will push out updates to a router that has problems and um, with older routers uh, this function is pretty much useless because they never update the really old stuff but uh, this is a fairly new router so you know if you ever have this option always always apply it or set it to where it automatically updates itself and finally under system settings this is where you can change a password change the time zone because clearly it is not January 1st 2000 because the world is not scared about blowing up anymore and um, that's and here's the auto update firmware enabling uh, where you can set to automatically update your firmware so that is pretty much everything you need to know about a Belkin N1 wireless router in the simplest way possible again if there's ever anything else you need to know you know feel free to look on internet forums or someone who maybe wants to go more in depth about this and they can explain maybe a little bit more to you but that's the simple way to set it up alright bye guys this has been simplicity electricity